Greetings AP Calc AP students. This is our finale video for topic 6.13. We're going to take a look at example 12, which is going to connect the definite integral to the area under a curve. And we're going to see a, a type of a problem that's very common on certain uh, years AP exams in a lot of times the free response section, but you could also see these in a multiple choice. So let's take a look at our example 12. So as you can see, we are given the graph of f of x here below, here in blue, and we're asked to find the solution to each of the following definite integrals. Use the provided graphs to resketch a graph of the function depicted and, um, and each of the integrands provided, and that will help figure out what region that you're trying to find the area of. So as you can see, this blue curve, it's very um, special in that it consists of a semicircle and three straight line segments. And that's really important because that will allow us to use geometry in order to take this area uh, and not have to break out into any of our very sophisticated uh, procedures that we've already talked about with the limit process and whatnot. So if we look at part A, and in B, C, and D, you can see that I've gone ahead and recreated the sketch of that curve. And I did so in a very weird way. I, I graphed it in yellow, which may not seem like a very wise idea, but I did that for a reason. I wanted the original function f of x to be graphed, but in a very faint way so that you could easily draw on top of it and not confuse the two graphs. So for part A, we're taking the definite integral from negative 4 to 0 of negative f of x. Well, what you want to do here is answer the question, what effect does the negative have on the function f of x when it's written in front like that? So it's all about your function transformations. And we hope <clears throat> that we realize that a negative in front is going to reflect the graph around the x-axis. Basically, if you had y values that were positive, they're now negative. If you had y values that were negative, they're now positive. So you're basically flipping this graph around the x-axis, but only worrying about the part that's between negative 4 and 0. So that starts actually right here. So I will simply take this ordered pair that was up here at negative 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, and it's now going to be at negative 4, negative 2. And you can see that I'm going to head this way towards that point negative 2, 0 by drawing that curve. And then I will reflect this diagonal line as such. And now I will have an enclosed region as soon as I close off the left and the right. And of course, the x-axis always serves as a boundary. That will be the case every single time. So if I shade in this region, this is what we're asked to find. And you're going to find that we can do this with geometry. So what would that geometry look like? Well, a couple of things that I want to point out. We have area that is located underneath the x-axis. And it's really important that we recognize that as being negative area. We talked about that in a previous problem just not very long ago in uh, example uh, I believe it was example, uh, they all start to run together, but I believe that was example nine. Now we have a negative that we're just going to factor out, and then I'm going to take the area of a quarter circle, which is one fourth pi times the radius two squared. So that would take care of this quarter circle. And then I have a two by one triangle. So one half times base two, height one, and that would take care of that result. And then if you want to go ahead and simplify, the fours cancel here, you would have a pi, and the twos cancel here, and you have your plus one. So that takes care of our first problem. In part B, we're taking the integration from two to six of the absolute value of f of x. Now the, the graphical effect that absolute values have is that any y value that's positive, they'll stay positive. Any y value that's negative will reflect above the x-axis. So from two to about four, you see that we were already positive, so there's nothing that's going to change. But from 4 to 6, this little diagonal segment here is going to reflect above the x-axis as such. And then if I complete, whoa, not sure what happened there. Let's see if we can get rid of those one at a time. Always a little bit of excitement going on, right? 
and then see if we can just move this thing out of the way. That's what happens when you rest your hand on the keyboard, everybody. So we're going to have dash line here, dash line here, and then the bottom. And at this point, if I shade this in, I'm using blue. Now, there's a reason. I am going to use blue anytime I'm shading regions that are above the x-axis, but I will use this red or pink magenta color if I'm shading below the x-axis. That might help us decide when we're positive and when we're negative. So to finish up our answer here, we know that we have a two-shaped approach. We have our first region, second region that I'll label one and two, and the first region is a trapezoid. Hopefully you're getting comfortable with that shape as long as much as we've seen it lately. And we have the base of two, the another base of one, right, when you look at the top and the bottom of the picture, and this trapezoid has a height of one. And then to that we will add it to the area of a triangle, and this is just simply a two by two triangle. If we simplify this, we'd have three halves plus two, and that could reduce to seven halves, or 3.5. Taking a look next at part C. Now it's nice that I don't have to scroll back and forth because we have our function already laid out. I'll explain why I have two versions of the graph here in just a moment. In fact, I might even take this graph and kind of stretch it a little bit to kind of make it a little bit more square. How's that? All right, so we're going to take a look at f of x plus 2, and a lot of this is just traced right back to your pre-calculus background. Do you remember what effect the plus 2 has on the function? A lot of students might look at this and think it's a vertical shift. Not the case. Not a vertical shift, and the reason is because we're adding the two within the parentheses, within the function. And so this is actually the opposite. It's a horizontal shift, but it's going to go the direction that you probably intuitively uh, wouldn't anticipate, and that would be to the left. So between negative two and one, we're going to take this function and move it left. Well, what I would suggest here, and, and there's another way to do this problem that I certainly would prefer. But if you want to just move every point that you see to the left, you could start by moving some of the key points, like the bottoms of these of this semicircle and the top of the semicircle. You see what I did there? That portion I've moved left. This little diagonal here, if I move that two units to the left, it would look like that. And then I'm going to slide this over one, two, three to replicate this portion that we had there. And then I just simply head towards that point there, but target is going to be two units to the left instead. So that would be my graph. And that's certainly acceptable. Now I'm only worried about the part that's between negative two and positive one. And I know I've graphed much more of this than I need to, but that's perfectly acceptable. That's not like uh, you're you're doing something that's incorrect you know we we are going to focus on what's sh the shaded region that's how i would grade this if a student were to graph more of it but i wanted to do this to illustrate something here in just a moment and actually we have a very easy shape right one times three easy peasy for the answer of three now what is the other way i think you'll like this instead of shifting this somewhat complicated graph to the left two units, you could conceivably think about this as staying as f of x. Remember f of x? f of x happened to be the original graph here that was in blue at the top of the page, right? In fact, I'll remind you, here it is. It's in blue at the top of the page. Now I'm just going to trace over this yellow and make it blue here. That's the original f of x. Well, if we don't want to shift the graph to the left, we could instead shift the boundaries to the right. Zero and three. Notice how each of these get two added to them. If you remember back in our early days of evaluating some very complicated limits of transformations of functions, we did the same thing then. What is nice about this is that the graph didn't have to change. You can take your 0 to 3, your new boundaries, and you quickly notice, yep, you quickly notice it's the same exact shape. It's this 3 by 1 rectangle all along. So it's a great strategy that might be able to save a little time. 
instead of shifting the function, keep the original f of x without the transformation, but then change the boundaries. And then finally in part d, a couple of ways to do this one I think as well, but this plus 2 after the f of x is going to indicate that we are going to undergo a vertical shift, a vertical shift up to 2 units. Now again, if we only graph this from 0 to 3, I only have to shift this portion up that I have here. So this horizontal line is going to move up to this part here, and at that point I can then just partition this from the left to the right, draw a line where my x-axis would be. This is a, a shape that's all above the x-axis, so I will color it in the blue, and I basically have a 3 by 3 square. Now I know that the shape does not look like a square, Part of that is because of the various software that I use and the moving from one computer to the next. But believe it or not, that looked like a square at school. <laughs> but as I'm broadcasting this on this particular computer, the aspect ratio changes a little bit. The other way to do this, and I, I want to throw this at you just in case that this is on your radar, but we're going to learn this formally here in a day or two but you could have broken this apart into two separate integrals. Now that kind of is saying you're breaking this apart into two separate areas. So what that would mean is that you could just have found the integration of f of x from 0 to 3, which you can see here was 3 times 1 or 3. And then if you find the integration of 2 from 0 to 3, you're like, well, I don't have a picture of that. But you could make one. Yes, you can. You could say, I have a graph from 0 to 3 that is a function f of x equal 2. That would look like this, wouldn't it? And so if we find just the area of that shape, that would be a 3 by 2 rectangle, which is 3 times 2 equals 6. And then if I take the 3 and the 6 and add them, that indeed is the same 9 that I had up there. Again, we're just at the beginning of our investigation of definite integrals and, and how they can depict area under a curve, and we've got so many more things to come. So great units, one of my favorite ones to teach in all of AB. Stick around for some videos over topic 6.4, 6.5 coming up very soon. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.